Welcome to O'Sullivan Guitar Works Studios and today at OGW we'll be talking about the TC Electronic iMaster Distortion Pedal. So when I picked mine up I got it from gear for musics website for £24.70 and uh, now it's uh, priced at £28.70. Quite a decent price for something that's going to have such a dramatic effect on your tone. So when I picked my pedal up I wasn't actually really looking for anything in particular, I was just searching the net at different new things that were out and this was more of just a lucky find for me. Now an obvious uh, thing for most of us metalheads out there is the name Iron Master is the name of a song off of the Entombed album Wolverine Blues. Now myself I am a big fan of Entombed and the Swedish death metal HM2 sound. I previously owned a HM2 and it was a Japanese one. Uh, it was one of my treasured pedals that I used a lot back in the day in some of my old projects. I used it for guitar, I used it on some bass and I even used it on some vocal parts for a solo project where I wanted something a bit different. Unfortunately, um, whilst I was in one band, I lent it to a singer and over time just lost contact and just forgot that I even had the pedal. So it's one of those ones that was just lost kind of in the ether of changing bands and music itself. So on the TC website, the pedal is listed as the iMaster Metal Distortion. It is an aggressive death metal distortion pedal with all analog circuitry and true bypass. But this is not exactly the specs, but I absolutely love the wording of the description about the gain. They say that mankind has been tricked into believing such blatant nonsense as less is more and other sophomoric terms like transparent or authentic are better. And Iron Master brings back elemental primordial gain, the kind of raw gain by which empires are either built or shattered. To me that appeals massively. Uh, as a big fan of metal, we like a bit of over the top symbolism and um, <laughs> metaphors. So the pedal runs on 9 volt battery or a power supply. It is um, quoted as being built like a tank. It's designed and engineered in Denmark. As we said before, it has true bypass and it's only two knobs on the front of it. That is the volume and the gain knob. Now from playing around with it and you'll see in the demo, there's not a lot of give with the gain. Even at zero, this thing screams and wails like a beast and um, it's great because you obviously want that from this pedal. Very little to really speak about on this pedal other than the sound as it only features the two knobs on the front, the switch itself, uh, the two inputs for the jacks and the input for the 9 volt power supply. Very simple pedal, very effective pedal. Now to elaborate on the quote on the TC website that it's built like a tank, I would have to agree, although I think this might actually destroy some old tanks if you threw it at one because this pedal is an absolute monster. It's very heavy. A little bit cumbersome because it's quite you know hard on the edges and stuff it's a bit, a bit of an awkward one however perfectly sort of flat on both sides the end input and output for the jack is actually probably better because this is quite a wide pedal it would be probably quite difficult running it next to things especially if you have quite a small board i have a small board myself and i actually have the tc electronic rush boost pedal which is the same size as the iron master and i do struggle sometimes with that pedal probably giving me the most hassle as far as um size and it probably next to my mxrm8 is one of the weightiest pedals i've ever used Something to take away from this though is that the build quality on this pedal is fantastic. It is solid. It feels like you throw it down a couple flights of stairs and it will just keep on going afterwards. The switch is great on it, very responsive, and the, the knobs are smooth. There's no click on them, but they're perfectly smooth and they do a job. Now obviously we can't talk about a pedal like this without making the obvious comparison to the Boss HM2, the standard bearer for this Swedish death metal sound. Now, some would say this is a clone. Yes, I think it is a clone, but I think more it's like a tribute pedal to it. And it even has its own sort of profile to the Iron Master. The HM2 has a bit more options, I'd say, with the color mix, the low and high knobs. And the distortion probably makes more of an impact when you adjust it on the HM2, whereas with the Iron Master, it's um, balls to the wall. Even with the gain turned all the way down, it's still very, very aggressive. Another comparison we can make is to the Boss MT2, the Metal Zone. Uh, much, you know, revered pedal in some ways and much reviled in some ways. It's become a bit of a meme pedal, really, if we're honest, the MT2. I've actually played around with one. I've used them a few times. I think we kind of all have at the beginning of our metal journeys. And recently I actually had one from my guitarist in my band and he gave me one to mess about with because he's had for a few years. And I found a really interesting mod online where you can take out part of the pedal circuitry and you can basically turn it into a really nice boost with a little bit of gain and basically just kind of, you know, 
level off the harshness in the mid frequencies and that was really cool and i think he was actually going to use it as a boost for a little while now another key point i like to talk about with pedals and um, is especially pertinent with the i master is price the i masters like i said at the beginning come in between 25 and 30 depending on where you get it from and i think sometimes things will go on sale and these are the kind of pedals that will end up popping up in sales and before delivery you'll tend to get them for that price now, if you're going to go down the metal zone route you're looking at around 85 pound brand new this in my opinion isn't really worth it as it's a, a bit of a clunky pedal to use sound wise it's not the easiest it's not the greatest unless you have a specific clear idea or like i did you're going to mod the pedal and you want a brand new one so you can start fresh then you know that's fine but if we're talking budgets or if we're talking just usability against cost i don't think the um, metal zone is actually worth it now the next comparison on price would be the hm2 now i've looked at reverb i've looked at gumtree i've looked at facebook marketplace i've looked at ebay and for a even a taiwan which a lot of people hold in lower regard than the japanese they're coming in around 200 pound some places 207 260 with extra shipping on top in excess of 15 to 20 pound shipping the cheapest i think i saw recently was 173 and then again that was with 20 odd pound shipping tacked on top again unless you really desperately want one of these pedals i would say avoid spending that much money on one i'm not going to lie and say i don't want a hm2 again but i'm not going to buy one for these sort of prices that's for sure i'll wait until i can get one maybe in a trade or i find one for a decent deal even one that's a bit beat up and needs a little bit of attention i'll happily pick up another option i'd like to touch on is at 22 pound 15 you have the Behringer HM300. Now I've used Behringer stuff in the past. I've used Behringer mics. I've used Behringer um, headphone amp I've got at the moment is a Behringer one. Um, I'm not displeased with Behringer gear. Some of it's very good. However, these are the plastic case pedals. I've held one in my hand. I've not had the pleasure of playing one. It felt very flimsy. It didn't feel at all like it would hold up to sort of usage on a pedal board especially i would probably avoid behringer pedals i mean some of them don't sound terrible i like to keep an open mind with these sort of things i hope to get my hands on a few behringer pedals to try out for the channel one day so enough of the talking let's get on with the playing i will be using a couple of different guitars with this pedal first guitar i'll be using will be a les paul epiphone career model with stock pickups i'll be running that into the imaster pedal i'll probably end up using a noise gate uh, just to help out with some of the squealing and talking that the pedal will do when I'm not actually playing so I can actually describe what's happening in the video. We'll then be going into my Marshall Valve State ATV. I'm going to try it first on the clean channel with the Les Paul and we'll see how it sounds. Then we'll try it on the distorted channel with the Les Paul. Next guitar I'll be using is my Ibanez RG73217 string. That has an invader in the bridge, so a very hot pickup. I use that in my demo for the Rowan noise gate and also use the eye master that so you'll get a sort of idea from that video the kind of sound you're going to be expecting we'll do that again into the Marshall valve state on the clean channel and then on the distorted channel and we'll see what we come back with so let's get on with it so our first test with the eye master today is going to be using my Ibanez RG7 327 string I am tuned to drop A from the lower string down that's A E A D G B E so we're going to have a nice big thick sort of tone to that and um, we're going to hear how it sounds through the clean channel without the eye master and then hear how it sounds through the clean channel with the eye master i'm also using the rowan noise gate from my last test video and the mosky power station from our first test video so this is our clean channel set at zero and we have the volume all the way up because really there's not much of a difference with the volume i'll play around with this you can hear but there isn't too much of a dramatic difference from the volume mostly it's the game we focus it on so engage in the iron master Yeah, 
added into the mix there and um, quite a bit of distortion, not too much. We will try turning the distortion up a little bit and see what happens. problems there, one time. If I shoulder the noise gate up a little bit to control that. Dramatic difference there, and that's just like a quarter turn of the game. We'll try another quarter, getting into dangerous territory here. fat sound, we like that sort of sound, that's ideal, and those gates actually helping. Right, so we'll give the gain another quarter turn up, and we are, again, very dangerous territory I'm guessing, so let's see it. of the iron box that I've noticed whilst using it. And uh, the next thing we'll try is full gain and um, yeah, kind of taking our life into our hands with this one. <laughs> channel with a full volume. There you go, that's uh, a pretty um, weird sound in a way, kind of. It's, it's very thick, it's very meaty, it's nice. I personally prefer using this pedal with um, a distortion channel, dying back the volume a little bit and letting this almost act as an overdrive with its own kind of EQ. So we'll try that next. Again, I'll keep using the 7 string for that, so when we come back we'll try that. So here we have the Amps Normal Gain channel. This is Overdrive 2 on the Marshall Valve Star AEV and that is turned up the gain to about 2 o'clock. Nothing too saturated, nothing too crazy sound. It's something that will sit quite nicely in a mix and you can mess around with and have it sit well with bass and cymbal sounds. <laughs> round sound there, perfect. So now let's try it with the iMaster engaged. So now we're going to try the iMaster through the distortion channel on my Marshall amp and see what we uh, get. So this is at zero gain and full volume. That's the sound I've used myself on a, a, an old project I've played on. It's just a really nice added sort of boost of that saturation and distortion with the extra EQ that the Iron Master has. Next step we'll try is turning the gain up a little bit. We'll go again another quarter turn. See where we are. Like I do, that's awesome sounding to me. 
Again, we will head up now to the 12 o'clock position, another quarter turn up, and see how we sound. Maybe turn the threshold and the noise gate a little bit to control that. saturation a lot of excess voicing and noise which is um, cool you want that live it's going to sound crazy but this noise gate is handling it very well so that's obviously a little tool you might have to have in your back pocket if you're going to go for something like this next we are going to try another quarter turn up that's to the three o'clock position let's see where we are with that Last, we're going to try full gain, full volume, distorted channel on the Marshall. The distortion on the Marshall is actually only up to about 2 o'clock. I don't have full gain on the amp. I um, don't really like the amp at full gain. I like a little bit of clarity for the notes. That's the one thing I think you lose with this pedal is you lose a lot of clarity. If you're pay playing riffs that were sort of, um, I'm trying to think of a good example, someone like Opeth used a lot of open chord riffs. A lot of um, you know harmonic passages where you would lose a lot of the clarity of your notes. So this probably wouldn't be a pedal for something like that. Whereas with something like a Bloodbath or like we said Entombed, you have that really good driven sound, that really heavy saturated sound. So let's try this out. See where we are. <laughs> saturated sound we can tell what we've got there we've got just pure aggression there so none of the amp settings have changed now but we are using my stock Epiphone Les Paul from 2003 it's a Korean model it is in drop C tuning at the moment so CGC onwards and uh, yeah we're going to try out this is the clean channel on the Marshall amp <laughs> Turn the gain up a quarter. Massive nasty feedback there. I'm not sure why that was happening. I think maybe the noise gate was struggling with how much gain there is with these pickups. Let's turn the noise gate threshold a little bit up. It seems to be fighting the noise gate a lot there. Right, we'll try turning the gain up a little bit more and see where we're at. So, gain up to 12 o'clock. I think we're going to have some problems with the noise gate here. It seems to be controlling it. Again, same thing we had with the seven string. It's not the most inspired sound. It's kind of obviously what you expected with this pedal, especially from the last tests. Just a bit more gain, a bit of a fatter sort of bottom end, that natural EQ of the Iron Master pedal. So let's get through to turn it up to around three o'clock. <laughs> Slight fluctuations there, especially with the noise gate. And now full gain. 
feedback problem there that wasn't happening with the seven string I think maybe because these pickups are a bit more open voiced it kind of just opens the gate up a bit on the guitar and the amp together and just makes it extremely aggressive massive over the top squeaking sound there as you can hear so what we'll do is we'll go over to trying it on the distortion channel seem to be a bit more control on the distortion channel I think that's also a thing to do with the voicing of this amp so let's give that a try now so let's hear the distortion channel without the eye master engaged and this is the low spot. It's a very uh, natural Les Paul Marshall combination sound there. Now we're going to turn the noise gate threshold to match sort of where I expect it to be needed and we're going to turn the gain up. Uh, we're going to start with the gain on zero. a little bit there. I really like that sound. That's such a nice combination. It's one of the sounds I used on one of my old EPs with this guitar, this pedal, and this setting without the noise gate. And um, I really like this sound. It really gives the Les Paul a massive kick. And um, yeah, it's a proper nice sound for my, for my taste. Now we turn the gain up a quarter. I'm going to expect the uh, gate to start to really work for this. <laughs> That's not a great thing to happen there, especially when you've got your noise gate on, because as soon as we start turning that noise gate up anymore, we're going to get a real clamp down boss of tone. So I'm assuming that we're going to get some problems past this setting with the distortion as well. So let's try turning it up to 12 o'clock. There's the issue you're going to have. I think it's the nature of the beast with a pedal like this, it is all or nothing really. It's um, even when it's on zero, especially if you're using it for a distortion channel, it is going to be massively aggressive and massively saturated and you're going to get issues with noise. It's something you're going to have to not mind or even want. Next step we'll try is turning the gain up a little bit. We'll go again another quarter turn, see where we are. awesome sounding to me. So that was our tests on the iMaster. Uh, hopefully we can um, come to a conclusion on this one. There are some problems with it. I personally love the pedal for what I use it for. Again it's going to be one of those things I think if you have the want for this pedal and the need for the tone that this can provide you, you will absolutely love it especially for its price. But yeah it's definitely a complicated one to sum up whether it's a really a great pedal, a good pedal or a bad pedal. So let's head over for our conclusion now. So this is a bit of an odd one. There's a lot to be said for the pedal, especially if you're a big fan of things like Entombed and Bloodbath and bands that have that Swedish death metal buzzsaw sort of tone. Also, this is a very simplistic pedal, so there's not much you can really say about the pedal. It's more about the tone than anything. Personally, I love this pedal. I bought it because um, I wanted to try it out and just see if I got anything near the HM2 tone. And to be honest with you, from my memory of using a HM2, I quite like this pedal a little bit more because it has just a very no-nonsense tone. It's very much transparent and clear as to what it needs to do, and it does it very, very well. I'm not a fan of personally blindly praising a pedal, though, so I will say about the negatives we turned up in our um, testing. 
that distortion issue was very frustrating. I had to obviously constantly, as you can see in the video, turn off the pedal to actually handle the amount of feedback we were having. The noise gate, although an inexpensive one, the Rowan that we reviewed in our last video, was not handling that level of distortion very well, even when putting the pedal through the clean channel. So if that's something that's gonna bother you, then avoid this pedal. But if all the other factors I've spoken about and all the positives entice you, then check the pedal out, definitely. But I also recognize this pedal is not for everyone. I definitely don't think if you're a blues player or a jazz musician, you're gonna want this on your board. The amount of gain you can achieve from the iMaster just by turning the knob up a tiny, tiny bit, or even having it on zero is ridiculous. It's definitely gonna provide you with something unique as well compared to most other distortion pedals, even the other ones in the TC electronic range. Contrary to what we've been saying already, this pedal's not really a one trick pony. There's a lot you can do with it. I personally have used it through an amp, I've used it on a clean channel, I've used it on a distorted channel already, and I've also used it through a um, guitar processor such as the Line 6 processors, uh, an old school pod on the Soldano 100 setting, and um, just to boost up and have that bigger, thicker, dirtier sound. Uh, another thing you can do is cranking your bass settings on your amp or putting your guitar in your neck position, you can get a quite a nice fuzz sort of sound, a very warm, meaty, heavily distorted fuzz sound, and also using it on a bass could be a great option for you. So that was the TC Electronic Iron Master Distortion Pedal, an um, absolute beast of a pedal, and um, I highly recommend it for those who have a certain taste and want to play around and try something different. I personally did, and I'm extremely happy with it, and we'll be keeping it for a long, long time, hopefully. So that's enough for us today here at OGW Studios. Uh, if you like what you watched today and any of the other videos, just like, subscribe, share, and let us know what you think in the comments. Take it easy, and take care.